Jesus loves you. Beloved ones, no matter who you are, Jesus loves you. God is our Father, and the blood of Jesus makes us the children of God. And whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. Jesus loves you, and whoever calls on his name will be saved. And beloved ones, the true revival is true representation of Jesus. We must all truly represent him. The love of Jesus, the love of Jesus and his character and his life, his divine nature, divine character, divine life and his holiness. We must truly represent Jesus. That is the true revival. That is the true revival. Jesus is preparing his bride, his church. He is preparing us all as his true bride. Yes, we have greater works to do. We have greater works to do. We have good works to do. We have glorious works to do. Much more in these coming years until rapture and eternal with our families and generations. So what you have seen, it's all for the glory of Jesus. Glory of Jesus. It's all him. It's all him. We have greater works to do. More good works to do. More glorious works to do in the coming years until rapture and eternal. Jesus loves you loves you, loves you. His blood, his resurrection, he lives and we shall live also and the great Holy Spirit will do it all for us. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Our Savior, our God loves you. Our God, our Father loves you. Every one of you, any one of you, Jesus loves you. I humbly come to you along with my very beloved wife, Suhanti, and our beloved one and only daughter, Divina. We come to the cross and the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus cleanses us. Holy Spirit takes the word from Jesus. Jesus is the word. Our resurrected Lord is the word. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God takes the word from Jesus, cleanses me and gives the word to me and to all and to everyone. Jesus loves you. And today, dear ones, we are going to uh, learn, me, you and all, anyone, we are going to learn and receive the message Jesus gave to the churches. That is, the churches, all of us, he gave message to John in the island of Patmos. My dear one, church is the body of Christ, individually, collectively, corporately. Church is the body of Christ, that we belong to him. And we are becoming his bride. We are becoming his bride. Jesus is the head of the church. And dear ones, we who belong to him, we are forgiven and saved by his grace, his blood, redeemed by his blood. And today we live by the resurrection power, resurrection life of Jesus. We are made alive and the great Holy Spirit in us leads the church, fills the church with the life of Jesus, resurrected life of Jesus and the mighty power. And we are that any one of you, every one of you, Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. And this church began, started in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, in the upper room when the disciples were gathered together, Jesus who rose from the dead ascended to the Father and on the day of Pentecost sent the mighty Holy Spirit and baptized them, immersed them. They were all placed into the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit took hold of them, filled them. Oh, and they spoke in various tongues. And dear ones, the church, the New Testament church, the new born again church that we are, all of us, anyone in Jesus' name, was birthed in the upper room, in the upper room. And beloved, and that's the church that is now increasing, increasing. So this message is for all the churches, every blessed church. It's for every prayer group, fellowship, it's for personal individuals. We are all individually the church. Jesus dwells in us. Jesus lives in us. Holy Spirit lives in us. So it's for individuals, every one of us, and then collectively churches, prayer fellowships, for everyone. Jesus is sending this message. And my dear ones, revelation means is to unveil, is to uncover, to bring out the truth the hidden truth, and that is Jesus' 
now telling all of us. So, beloved ones, we are now going to see the first church the Lord was speaking to is the church in Ephesus. Ephesus. The church in Ephesus. And the Lord initially always commends them. Commends. Always Jesus commends. Jesus is a blessed, loving God with affection. With affection, he commends us. He appreciates us. And that's how the Lord begins. And he, say, and he appreciates their works and their accomplishment. And he appreciates our labor, our labor, our works, our patience in life, the long-suffering patience in churches, in our personal lives. And he also appreciates the, the goodness, how we resist evil, that we cannot bear evil, and how he... he, he sees how we stand for the truth, rejecting all lies and people who lie, we reject them in, and stand for the truth, stand for the truth in the love of Jesus, in the love of Jesus, Jesus commands all these things in the churches. And for Jesus' sake, for Jesus' sake, with patience, patience, how you labor, how we all labor for Jesus' sake. And without stopping, without fainting, or oh, without withdrawing in the midst of very difficult times. And how the Lord commends the uh, uh, church uh, in Ephesians. He says that you have stood holy, you have hated unholiness, deceptiveness, lying and impure practices in life and ministry. And Jesus says, I also hate and you have be behaving like me, Jesus says, you're also hating such impurity and perverse things in churches or personal lives. The Lord is pleased with them, pleased with them. And he commends the standard of godliness they have. Even for all of us, he commends us, he commends us. And but he is saying one thing, I am grieved. One thing, because this message is for us personally and collectively for all churches, all prayer fellowships, everyone. Jesus loves everyone. No condemnation, no condemnation. But the Lord says, I am grieved. I, I have one thing. That, uh, and he rebukes them. He doesn't condemn. He rebukes them. He says, you have lost your first love. First love. What does that mean? My loving children, the initial devotion the initial desire, the initial love and the thirst we had for Jesus and his word and the Holy Spirit and the church and to God our Father and to God our Father, the initial love has slowly deteriorated because we get busy with ministry, we get busy in many things, my loving children in personal lives and our ministry that we don't, our closeness with Jesus, our oneness with Jesus, the first love, giving the first place to Jesus, to God, our Father, spending, uh, our investing and spending our time with Him, my loving children, to become more and more one with Him, to all, to, the Lord wants to uh, abide in us always and we abide in Him, him. So our first love with Jesus, that is the most important. The importance, the importance that we give to his word, to his Holy Spirit, to the church that has dis deteriorated. So the Lord says, repent, repent, come back. He loves us. Remember from where to where we have come. So we need to be, get closer to Jesus. We need to become one with God the Father, with God the Father through Christ Jesus. That oneness is priority, priority. Everything else can stop or slow down. Oneness with God the Father through Christ Jesus. So if, so the Lord says, remember from where to where you have come and come back to the first love, to the first love. It's for all of us, all of us. And otherwise the Lord wants, with love he wants, he says, I will come and I will, my, you will lose my presence. The light in you will become dim and dim and the light in you will be removed. Oh, the Lord is warning. He says, my presence, you will not feel my presence. Oh, my loving children. And therefore the Lord is warning all of us with love, with love, correcting us with love. And then he says to the person who overcomes, 
who listens, who humbles and repents with godly sorrow, with godly sorrow and says, Lord, I come back to you. I come back to you, Father. I will give you all. My first is you all the time. And coming back, the Lord says, the reward, the reward to the overcomer, to the one who repents and comes over, comes back to Jesus in the first love, the initial dedication, devotion, the sincere thirst, thirst and the longing for Jesus and God the Father. Oh, beloved ones, and the Lord says, you, you will be given the fruit of life. You can eat the fruit of life. And oh, that's a marvelous blessing. That is life on this earth, more life in abundance on this earth, long life well satisfied with salvation on this earth, with our families, our generations, until rapture, and then in heaven, in eternally, eternally with Jesus living in our Father's mansions. What a joy. Let us examine ourselves, re realize from where to where we have fallen or come, and get back to Jesus. He loves us, loves us, loves us. He's calling us back. He loves you. The second church is Smyrna. The church called Smyrna. It was in a place called Smyrna. And Jesus commends them, appreciates them, and empathizes, empathizes with them, encouraging them, their works. This is a very peculiar church, a marvelous church, because here people were executed, martyred, they suffered, they were persecuted. Oh, I tell you, for their faith in Christ Jesus, put in prison, harassed mentally, emotionally, physically. They went through all that for Jesus' sake, for Christ's sake. They willfully, joyfully, willing, willing and joyfully offered themselves to be persecuted for Christ's sake, for Jesus' sake, for the gospel's sake. Oh, my loving children, they didn't suffer for their mistake or their uh, faults or whatever. No, this is, they suffered with joy, willingly offering themselves and counting it a great joy, enduring all the suffering for Jesus' sake, for Christ and the gospel's sake. And they tolerated with so much of patience. People who were deceitful, blasphemous, they tolerated and went through this suffering. Oh, beloved, martyred at many times, persecuted, and, and the Lord commends them and he applauds them. He applauds and the Lord is so pleased and, uh, with them. And the Lord strengthens them, full assurance that he is, his acceptance and his presence and his peace and his strength is always with them. Oh, and the Lord tells them, fear not, fear not, he tells, and he applauds them and for their faithful, faithful love for Jesus, for God the Father and the Son and the Gospel in the Holy Spirit. Oh, and it's the great Holy Spirit who gives them this strength and this inspiration to willingly go through this with joy. And Jesus is assuring word, he is encouraging them. There's no rebuke for them, no warning for them, just a loving instruction, a loving instruction to continue in their faithfulness, continue. Holy Spirit is there to give us every strength and the word of God and the word of God and the blood of Jesus, yes, to continue in the faithfulness. And the reward, reward is they are free from eternal judgment. What a blessing. They are free from eternal judgment. They shall live with God in heaven. They shall live with God in heaven. And then they are given the crown of life. They are given the crown of life to reign in life with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing while on this earth, while living on this earth, and then eternally in heaven with Jesus. Yes, and even some of them will be raptured as they physically live when Jesus comes to rapture in midday, all of us, yes. So this is a very blessed, blessed church. And the Lord tells them, continue in your faithfulness. And one thing in the church in Ephesus, Jesus presents himself as the Son of God, taking care of all the churches. He's holding the seven candlesticks, the seven churches means it's the complete church. And the seven stars means all the ministers of the gospel, everywhere, everyone, 
Jesus is overseeing, taking care and holding them. And here Jesus presents himself in Smyrna as uh, he, he presents himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the completion and the continuation. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Now the third church, my beloved, we may be in any one of these. We are coming to a wonderful church in a little while. Yes, now this is Pergamos, Pergamos church. And here, the church in Pergamos, Jaws, Jaws, Jesus says, Jesus says, he commends them with love. He commends them, appreciates them, understands all what they are doing. He says, I understand your works. He commends them, their efforts, their outcome and their struggles. My dear ones, sometimes you may feel no one understands you and what you are going through. Indeed, Jesus understands. He commends. He appreciates. He is with you, all of us. He loves you, loves you, loves you. And he, Jesus commends, you are holding fast to my name. You are not denying your faith, even in the midst of all these defeated evils and defeated struggles. You have not left your faith, you're holding on to the faith, not denying the faith. The Lord is well pleased, well pleased. But there are few things, few things that are grieving, Jesus says, which is sin in, the, in this church. He is against the practice of deceitfulness, impurity, unholiness, and also idol worship are having come to know Jesus, the living God, the living Savior, idol worship, eating food given to idols. It's a kind of worship. Oh, it is abominable idol worship. But it, it doesn't, my loving children, here we must understand Jesus doesn't condemn anyone. We are not here to condemn. We must never condemn. The Lord is only telling us to be wise so that these these things don't become a practice, a habit, and in the churches. So, but personally, never to condemn anyone. Yes, Jesus loves everyone. He wants to save everyone and anyone. He loves you. And, the, and in that church, they didn't have the real fear of God, the reverence, because these are messages to the churches, to all Christians. Jesus loves you. No fear of God, no reverence to God in churches. The Lord is grieved. The Lord is grieved. And uh, the practice of unholiness, unholiness in churches, the Lord is grieved. Yes. And he says the, the, the meaning of Pergamos is getting attached with the world, with, attached with the world. And therefore, we get attached with the world, the worldly practices enter into the church and that becomes an acceptable practice in the church. Anything that is not pleasing and right in the sight of God. So the Lord is rebuking now. He is rebuking and he is correcting with compassion. He is rebuking and correcting and warning. He says it's a corrective cleansing. Corrective cleansing. He says repent, repent. He loves us. He says repent with godly sorrow. And the Lord says, I will come and overpower all these unholy, evil things. Yes, the Lord's word, the Lord's word cleanses us, cleanses us. Yes, and those who repent with godly sorrow and overcome, overcome. The Lord says, I will give you the hidden manna, the secrets of the word of God, the living power in the living word of God. It's a word of life that is preserved for us. The word of life that is preserved for us will be given to us. Anyone, any one of you. And a white stone will be given. Yes, white stone. That's a sign of victory and triumph on this earth while we live. White stone. And then also a new name, God says, I will give you that is reserved. And it's a special honor, a special appreciation by Jesus himself, by God the Father himself. And my dear children, such honor will be on the earth while we live, while you live on this earth until rapture and then in heaven. And the Lord Jesus presents himself as the Lord Almighty risen Savior who has the two-edged sword in his mouth. It's the word of the living God, living God. It's, the word is compassionate, but the word is cleansing also, not 
condemning, but compassionate cleansing, cleansing. So let us repent, anyone, with godly sorrow and come to Jesus. Yes, the churches, the churches, the fellowships, all of Everyone, Jesus loves you. This is a message to the churches. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Then the fourth church is Tiatria, 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 the fourth church. And here Jesus again commends. Always Jesus commends, appreciates, and he expresses his satisfaction. That's his affection to us. That's his affection to us. And he says, I've seen your works, your efforts, your results of your work, your charity that you show, love that is in action, charity and benevolence, your service, practicing my love. God is well pleased. This church practices the love of Jesus, the faith in God, the Father, faith in God, the Father and the Son, Jesus, patience, the patience and the long suffering they have. And the Lord says, the last is that it is becoming better and better. So the Lord is well pleased with them, pleased with them, that they have strived to improve and to do better in serving Jesus, in following Jesus. But the Lord says, there is something I need to warn you. Rebuking comes. Rebuking comes now with love and correction. Rebuking love and correction. The Lord says, any kinds of false prophetic guidance, unholiness, false prophetic guidance, impure lifestyle, deceiving, deception in the church, deception in the church and idle practices. All these, the Lord says, have to be put out of the church. It must not become a practice. Practice in the church, no. Acceptable in the practice of the churches, no. That's what the Lord rebukes, rebukes and warns and gives them time, gives them time to repent. This is the message for all Christians in all churches, all fellowships, even personally, personally for all of us. God gives time to repent, repent. And the Lord is still patiently working, waiting, waiting. And he says, if you don't repent, then you will face the great tribulation. Oh, beloved ones. And God searches our hearts and minds, our thoughts, and he will give everyone according to their works. So the Lord says, my children, repent and come, repent, overcome, overcome. And But in that church, the, uh, the, there are certain people, they are, the, they are called the minority of God, my, who are not into all this. They are faithfully, faithfully, truthfully following Jesus and practicing the love of Jesus faithfully and truthfully in the church. So the God commends such people. They are God's minority, my loving children, and they overcome. And the Lord tells them to continue, continue. He encourages them. And then he says the reward, always he completes with reward. Such a loving father, such a loving savior. Rewards to the newcomer to the overcomer, to the overcomer, rewards to the overcomer, is that the Lord says there won't be any burdens on you. There won't be any burdens added in your life. And the Lord says, I give you grace. I give you grace and strength to hold on to the truth until I come. Jesus says, Jesus says, and he says, I give you power and authority over nations, which means you will have God, Holy Spirit led, Holy Spirit empowered with the love of Jesus positions uh, in authority on this earth while we live. And then power over nations in the new earth, new earth in eternity. What a joy. And the Lord says the morning star will shine. Your, our, your lights, our light will shine. Our light will shine. Even in dark times, our lights will shine. The morning star, yes burning and lighting through the night. We are the light of the world. Our lights will shine more. And Jesus encourages the rewards to the overcomer, yes. And the Lord presents himself as the Son of God with eyes like flame of fire, the resurrected Lord and his feet like shining brass. Oh, what a savior, like shining brass. And that's the 
a symbol of judgment and his eyes flaming fire, holiness and love, holiness and love. He is the resurrected Lord, our Savior, our Lord Jesus. He loves you, loves you, loves you. The fifth church is Sardis. The fifth church is in the place called Sardis. And Jesus straight away starts rebuking. But he commends them later. He commends them later. But he first rebukes them, corrects them and warns them. He says, your works are not acceptable, not perfect before God. You have a name that everything is fine, but outwardly appearing fine, outwardly. But inside is not satisfactory. Inside is not Christ-like. Inside is not Christ-like. So the Lord is very, dist very, uh, very upset, very grieved, grieved and there is really no life in such people, no life in such churches. And the Lord doesn't condemn them. He loves them, he loves them, but he rebukes them, corrects them and with warning, with warning, like, and like how a father rebukes and corrects a son, the Lord is doing. And the Lord says, remember how you received salvation, how you received my grace and how you heard. The Lord says, now watch. Be awake, watch and strengthen those things which are perishing in your life. Yes, and you have forgotten them. You have become weak in my spirit, weak in my life, the Lord is telling. So remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember the greatness of the Lord and hold fast, hold fast. And the Lord says, otherwise he says, I will come like a thief in the night, thief in the night, at the most unexpected time, unexpected hour. And the Lord again comments, there are few people who are faithfully, truthfully following him in this church. They are the Lord's minority, Lord's minority. They are keeping their lives pure, their garment holy and pure, a clean and pure inside, inside, inward, faithfully continuing in salvation, faithfully continuing being right in the sight of God, the righteousness of Jesus. They are preserving the righteousness that God has given through Christ Jesus. And their garments are pure. And the Lord says, I will walk with you. I will live with you on this earth itself until rapture and eternal. He is pleased with such people. Yes. And the Lord says to the others, repent, repent and overcome, overcome and Come back, come back. He loves you. He loves you. And he says, you will be always, that's the reward. You will be always clothed in my salvation, white garment, spiritual garment, salvation and righteousness of God, right in the sight of God the Father through Christ Jesus on this earth itself. And your name will be written and remain in the Lamb's book of life. Names will be remaining in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. What a joy, what a joy, what a blessing, eternal blessing. And Jesus says, I will confess your name before my Father in heaven. Oh, and the angels in heaven, what a loving Savior. He never condemns, he only rebukes, corrects and calls them back. Says, I will Confess your name in heaven before the Father and the angels. Oh, the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus. And the Lord presents himself as the one who holds the seven spirits. Seven spirits are the complete works of the Holy Spirit, complete manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the seven stars are the seven complete ministers of the gospel. Everyone, everyone, all Christians, all believing saved Christians, all believing saved children of the living God through Christ Jesus, everyone, all servants of God, he holds them. Now we come to a very wonderful, beautiful, blessed church, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. This is marvelous, wonderful. Jesus is so pleased with them. Jesus commends them, straight away commends them. He says he knows their works. He appreciates with pleasure. He acknowledges with joy. This is a wonderful church. We must endeavor to be this church in our personal lives, personal lives, in our ministry, everywhere, churches, all. He commends with such a joy, appreciates with such pleasure and acknowledges with joy. And he says, there is always a door open for you, always, which no man can shut it, no man. 
and even with your little strength the Lord is commending us you have kept my name faithfully without denying Yes, and you have kept my word even with a little strength. That's the grace of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of his mercy, his resurrected love and life for us. Yes, you have kept my word, Jesus says. And also you have tolerated those who are not true, those who lie. You have tolerated them, long suffered with them. And he says, such people will come and worship before you. They will see how I have honored you and blessed you. Those who lie, those who are deceptive, they will come and worship before you. Jesus says, what an honor. It's a kingly honor for those who are faithful like this Philadelphia church. Oh, he loves you. Oh, he loves you. It's a high honor and testimony from Jesus, the head of the church. And, and the Lord says, it's a big reward in the future. You have kept the word of my patience. Jesus says, my patience, you have kept my word faithfully. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the earth. He says, I will keep you away. He says to all of us, all of us, he says he will keep us away from the tribulation. We will never pass through tribulation. That's the wrath of God and the punishment of God that will come upon the earth after rapture. The Lord says we will be raptured. He says we will never go through tribulation. Oh, what a blessing. What a joy, I tell you. We are safe and surely preserved until rapture in midair with Jesus, with our homes, our families, our child, our generation, your children, your generation, and in whatever way you are safe, kept safe and preserved for rapture as we practically, physically live on this earth in these long more years with our family and generation, you and your generation, all of us, or in whatever way you are, he loves you never to go through tribulation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the church that we must be in our personal lives, personal lives and in the ministry. Oh, and he gives a gracious instruction. He says, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast. Hold fast so that you will not, no man can take your crown. Yes, the Lord has given us a crown and he says, hold fast. He is giving us the grace, the love, the power of his resurrection. He is holding us to hold fast so that no man takes our crown. Yes, what a love of God the Father through Christ Jesus and the rewards to the overcomer who holds on with Jesus in this Philadelphia church, all of us, all of us, until rapture with our families and generation. The rewards is, we'll be the pillars in God's temple. Yes, eternally, eternally. And no more going out. God's name is written in us. The name of the city of God, New Jerusalem, that descends from heaven, oh, in eternity. And God's new name, Jesus will give us. A new name, Jesus will give us. Oh, my beloved children, we must continue like this more and more, becoming better and better, the true bride, the true representation of Jesus in these coming more long years, doing faithful, faithful, greater works, greater works, so pleasing and glorious to God the Father through Christ Jesus as the bride, true bride, true representation until rapture and eternal with our families and generations. Oh, rejoice, he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. And Jesus presents himself as the one who is holy and true and who has the keys of David. And when he opens, no man can shut. And what he shuts, no man can open. He says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Jesus says, Jesus says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. Resurrected Lord, risen Savior, our God, our Savior, the head of the church. So let us endeavor to be like the Philadelphia church. He loves you. And the completion church is Laodicea, 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 the seventh church is Laodicea. Jesus immediately, immediately rebukes, corrects, and warns them. Severe warning, severe warning, severe correction, <laughs> rebuking them. No condemnation, no condemnation. Jesus is love. God is love. And the Lord says, I know your works. It's neither hot nor cold. It's neither hot nor cold. It's a lukewarm, lukewarm, which means you're not willing to change. 
You're not willing to become good. You're not willing to be restored and reformed. You're not willing to become good or willing to change. The Lord wants them. He says, I will spew you out of my mouth. He is angry, but he loves. It's a anger that comes out of the love of God the Father, the righteous, holy anger because of love. He says, I will spew you out. And the Lord says, you think you are rich, you are increased with other things. God says, you say you don't need anything. You say you are well satisfied. You, you are self-righteous, self-righteous that you don't need anything. You are fine. Oh, the Lord is warning. The Lord is warning. And he says that you don't know your spiritual self. You are spiritually wretched, the Lord says. It's out of love that his anger comes, out of holy, holy love. And he says, you, you, are, you, you think you are dressed up, but you are naked, spiritually naked, spiritually poor. Nothing, no life of Jesus in you. Oh, and the Lord is warning them, warning them, warning them now. And he says, he, he says, gives them a very loving, loving warning. And he says, you think you're Raymond? Your dress is spiritual, dress is white. No, it's all dirty. And the Lord says, My love and me will never leave you, never forsake you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lord says, As whom as many as I love, I rebuke. Like a father, like a father, he rebukes and cleanses and corrects. And he says, repent, 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 come over, come back. And the Lord says, I stand at the door and knock. This is beautiful. I stand at the door and knock. He is knocking and waiting, knocking and waiting. And if any man hear my word, my voice, and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he will sup with me. Jesus is knocking and waiting to save, to keep all of us safe, secure, until rapture and eternal. Yes, so this is the love of God the Father, the love of Jesus. And the Lord says, for those who overcome, you will be granted to sit with me in heaven, in my throne. See, for those who repent with godly sorrow and overcome, and come to Jesus. And Jesus says, as I overcame, and sat down with my father in my father's throne, I will also make you sit with me in my throne in heaven. What a joy. Oh, because Jesus overcame all temptations. He's God. He had no sin. He had no sin. He came as a man with no sin, but overcame all the temptations and gave us the victory, dis destroying all Satan, sin, death, hell, curse, and all darkness. And he is the perfect son of man. He is son of God. And he was always right in the sight of his father. He saved us, redeemed us. He had no sin. As a man, he had no sin. So pure and holy. Today risen from the dead. Ascended to the right hand of the father. He is our savior and redeemer. God in flesh. Our risen savior. So he is in all this my loving children. In this he shows himself, that's important, he shows himself as the faithful one, true witness. He is the creation, he is the beginning and the completion and continuation. He is our creator. So my dear children, in completion, in conclusion, our loving God and our loving Father, God our Father, is preparing all of us for a life well-pleasing to him, glorious to him, pleasing to him, glory to him through Christ Jesus. On this earth, on this earth, in the coming more long years as we live practically, physically, with our families, our child and generation, your children and generation, or in whatever way you are, until rapture, as we practically, physically live, well-pleasing to him, bringing him all the glory and honor and praises, our life gratitude, to God the Father and through his Son Jesus. God is also preparing us to be raptured, to be raptured in midair with Jesus when he comes. And thereafter to live with him in heaven with our families and generations. So we have greater works to do. True bride, true 
representatives in these coming long years with our families and generation, all of you, or in any way you are. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. And we have to look unto Jesus, our risen Savior and God, looking unto Jesus. Let us be found in the Philadelphia church, the, the type of church, the type of church, Philadelphia, and continue the church that had no rebuke, only encouraging instruction, only encouraging instruction and assured reward, assured reward of rapture. It is the church of love, it's the church of life, it's the church of revival, true bride, true bride. That's what we all personally, personally and every church fellowship, every group must endeavor and we must pray for one another, love one another in the love of Jesus that this church, Philadelphia type church, that's what we are and we must be more and more. True bride was well assured, confidently assured that we will never go through, never go through tribulation. We will be raptured as we practically, physically live in these long more years as the true bride, true representation of Jesus, truly serving him pleasing to him, bringing him all the glory and honor and praise with our families, our child and generation, your children and generation or in whatever way you are raptured in midday as we practically, physically live. What a savior, what a Lord. We have greater works to do, greater works, good works, more works to do. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. And we will never go through tribulation. Oh, beloved ones. He loves you, loves you, loves you. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, 17, 18. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. Philippians 1, 6. John 10, 10. Psalm 91, 16. Oh, beloved ones, rejoice, rejoice. Jesus loves you as we take this new covenant. There's, this is the seal. This is the endorsement for all what we have heard the living word of God. Jesus took bread. He break it, blessed it, break it, gave it to the disciples and said, take it. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of Jesus is risen with his body. He is our resurrected Lord and God and Savior. He said, because I live, you shall live also. Rejoice. He loves you, loves you, loves you. And Jesus has stripes. We are healed, made whole by the stripes of Jesus. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Oh, he loves you. The body of Jesus broken for us. He is living. He rose with his body. like manner, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God the Father in heaven, gave it to the disciples and said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament that is shed for you and for many for remission of sins. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Loving Savior, risen Lord said henceforth, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. He lives, he is risen. Yes, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus cleanses me whiter than snow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we look unto the Father, loving Father, loving Father, as your dear children are looking unto you, Lord, Holy Spirit, I thank you, 
Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we come to you, Father God, in Jesus' name, and the great peace, peace, peace of Jesus fills your children, the great joy of Jesus fills your children, the great living hope, living faith is filling your children, every defeated fear, every defeated anxiety, every defeated mental, mental pain and emotional griefs are washed away by the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. The Lord is strengthening you, the resurrected living Savior, living God, Jesus' strength and faith is filling your loving children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Every defeated mental agony leaves. Every defeated physical pains and physical ailments are leaving. Robin, Robin, Jesus heals you. Jesus holds you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Stella. Jesus goes before you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Your living hope, your living faith, your living joy is filling your loving children. Everyone, everyone, everyone. The love of Jesus, love of God, the Father through Jesus is filling them. Thank you, Jesus. You are healing every defeated ailment in the throat, in the throat, every defeated ailment in the head, in the head, every defeated ailment in the body, every defeated ailment. Fevers are leaving, leaving every defeated back pain, spinal pains are leaving, every defeated ailment in the eyes, in the ears are leaving, every defeated ailment in the bones and joints are leaving, every defeated ailment in the heart is leaving, yes, every defeated financial, financial uh, uh, troubles and financial pains are leaving. New doors will open. Favor, favor, favor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Peace in homes, peace in families, peace in workplaces. The peace of Jesus, risen Savior, resurrected Lord's peace is filling, filling, filling everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Joes, Joes, receive, 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 receive. Joel, Joel, receive, receive, receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Nathaniel, receive, receive, receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mary Ann, Mary Ann, receive, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, whoever calls on the name of Jesus is saved, whoever, whoever, whoever calls on the name of Jesus is saved, thank you, Father, thank you, God, you are blessing them, healing them, saving them, delivering them, redeeming them, giving life, life, life in abundance until rapture and eternal, long life, well satisfied with self salvation until rapture and eternal. Every defeated ailment in the blood, every defeated ailment in the immune systems, every defeated coughs and chest pains, every defeated lungs and tumors, every defeated ailments are washed away by the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, the power of God, Holy Spirit is quickening everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 My dear son will continue and the Holy Spirit will move mightily. He will continue in the same message and move mightily and complete the service praying for everyone with testimonies, testimonies and benediction and benediction. The Lord loves you, loves you, loves you. My dear children, you must go extra effort, extra effort and bring more, more people as the Lord is blessing and increasing the Sunday service, Sunday service in Basha, even the other languages. Please do your best to be there as one, as one together in the love of Jesus, in the love of God the Father. Bring everyone, bring new, new people. This is the ministry that wipes the tears, tears of the people. Yes, the Lord is there and be faithful in the church, be faithful in the church in every aspect, be faithful, faithful, faithful and truthful and yes, in everything, in your giving, in your giving and in your attendance, in your attendance and attachment, attachment, faithfulness. Yes, that's what God honors and rewards. Jesus loves you. We have greater works to do, much more as the true bride until rapture and eternal with our families and generation. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. See you again, see you again, see you again, always, always until rapture, until rapture and eternal with Jesus in heaven. Bless you, see you again until rapture. So this is Billa. She came to the service today with pain at the back of her neck and also on her right leg as you call it out. She said the pain completely left. Completely gone child. You came with the pain child in your neck at the back of your neck. You can move your neck up and down. You can lift your hands and move your neck for me. All the pain is gone and your leg, child. You came with that pain, child. You can stamp your leg. You can swing your leg and show me. 
All the pain is gone, child. Completely gone. Who healed this beloved girl? Who healed this blessed daughter? Lift your hands and say thank you to Jesus. Jesus is here today. Simon, your fear goes away now. Be healed. Jesus is healing you, Simon. Pastor, this is Simon. By the word of knowledge, you called out, Simon, you are being healed now. Instantly, the knee pain that he was suffering for past two months left. He is praising the Lord right now. My Lord, son, for two months you had that pain. And your name is Simon, and the Lord made me to call that name. And it's gone, son. You can stamp your feet. It's gone. For two months you had it, son. Who healed his loving son? Who healed his loving son? Called his name and healed him. Say thank you to Jesus.